Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Stefan and today I'll be introducing you guys to an empire that is on the one hand a massive contradiction in its very nature, but on the other hand a high performing top tier empire that could potentially win you on Grand Admiral difficulty with little to no problems. This empire is fanatic egalitarian. It believes in the values of justice and equality for everyone. It is a meritocracy because as long as you can achieve your post in life, you deserve that post in life. But there are those that don't deserve to achieve that post in life. They're less equal than us. They are syncratics, and they have evolved along with our species for thousands of years. We don't like them though. Even though they've been on the planet for a while, there are theories out there that they have come from another planet, and therefore they're equal to us, but they're less equal. Because of their origin, they cannot be leaders. They cannot represent. All they can be are chattel slaves. And before you go thinking that this isn't some very late April Fool's joke, you can see here that farmers, miners, and technicians are filled with these inferior burbs that are called blebs. Bird plebs. And uh, yeah, an egalitarian slavers. Who doesn't love the sound of that? This empire is not only a hilarious contradiction at its very core, it's also a very powerful build. Yet 20 to 35% bonuses right off the bat due to the maximization of the efficiency of your pops. And you also retain those bonuses well into the mid-game once you bioascend and maximize your species even further. For this reason, I'll be happy to demonstrate this build. I'll show you how this works and how you can most efficiently manage your population because population management is a pretty complex mechanic that does require some knowledge. So without further ado, let's get into the build, shall we? Obviously, we are playing as a fanatic egalitarian, not only because this is hilariously contradictory with the whole premise of this build, but it also gives you a lot of extra modifiers. It gives you extra faction influence gain, which is extremely beneficial because uh, most of your factions are going to be very happy throughout the game, and it also gives you some specialist output. Since specialists are your lifeblood, they are the producers of your alloys and your research, you do want as much output out of them as possible. Now, the alternate version of this build is going to be to go with materialist. This way, roboticizing your empire is going to be way easier, and you can go for the powerful synth ascension later on. Not only that, you're going to be able to very easily go with Technocracy, and Technocracy is definitely on the top of the list of the best civics in the game. I'm actually considering making a civics tier list, so let me know what you guys think in the top right corner. Uh, either way, you're going to benefit significantly, but since we're going for the shock factor with this build, we're going to go with Fnatic Egalitarian. Slightly less min-maxed, but it's also way more fun to play. Uh, to achieve the actual slavery thing, you have to choose Syncratic Evolution as a civic, and Xenophobe as an ethic. That way we have another species that we can enslave. Because that species is not our one original species, we can do with them whatever we can do with Xenos, and uh, that includes enslaving. This also provides us with some very nice bonuses, such as decreased star base influence cost, and extra pop growth speed, and so, you know, you're gonna get some very good bonuses. Plus, if you don't like some Xenos on your worlds, you can easily purge them. A very nice option indeed. Uh, as far as authority goes, with Fnatic Egalitarian, you really have no choice. If you're playing with Materialist, of course, you can get Oligarchic, which is better. Uh, now, the reason Democratic is really a detriment to this empire more than anything is because not only do you have to deal with elections every 10 years in which you have to spend a bunch of influence to get the candidate you want, you also have to fill mandates for a very, very unfulfilling reward. Uh, for working towards a mandate, all you get is 6 months worth of unity production. 6 months over 10 years amounts to about a 5% increase in unity production. With other authorities, you get agendas. And uh, one of those agendas is a straight up 10% unity bonus, which is just literally better than a democracy's 6 months. Uh, granted this is not a big detriment, but it's more of a nuisance than anything. As far as our other civic goes, we're gonna gun for meritocracy. Get an extra leader level cap, and we also get a 10% to specialist output. Combined with a fanatic egalitarian bonus, this is a total of 20%, which is wonderful and can put you really far ahead of the game in the early game. The 20% specialist bonus applies to all jobs that produce resources. However, we also want to increase our amenities production because this species is going to be in charge of producing amenities as well. Uh, in the past, I've thought charismatic was not worth it as a trait. After all, you have to spend 2 trait points, and all you get is extra amenities which are only applicable to certain jobs. However, with this empire, we have two species to play around with, which means double the trait points and double the trait picks, which means charismatic is worth it. This also has the side benefit of making low habitability worlds 
a lot more manageable because the greatest issue that you're going to encounter with them is uh, the pop amenity upkeep. Pop resources are not a really big problem, especially when you have only 5 pops, but when you have only 5 pops on a planet, you can't really afford to spend 2 of them to work in a theater or something. Charismatic makes starting on a low ability world a lot easier. For our other traits, we take weak because obviously this doesn't really impact us whatsoever, and we also take wasteful. Now instead of wasteful, you can also go for something like decadent, uh, but in those cases where your pops do end up as workers, this is not really too good. Additionally, as a positive trait, we take Rapid Breeders, and on our secondary species, we take Slow Breeders. This way, we get to manage our population. Population growth in stars works on a weight system, in which the population with greater weights has a higher chance of appearing than a population with lower weights, and Breeders traits are one of the factors in the population appearing. As you can see from this little chunk of game code, we have a weight that is called New Pop Growth Mod Molt. Uh, which means that populations with higher growth multipliers are prioritized over populations with low growth multipliers, and the rapid breeder and the slow breeder trait achieve just that, a 20% difference in the pop growth rate, which is clearly impacting the rate at which they're chosen to grow. Uh, with this setup, we achieve about a 3 to 1 pop ratio, in which we have about 3 normal bird pops and uh, 1 slave bird pop, and this ratio is overall pretty good, and it allows you to have a lot of specialized worker pops while also not skipping out on specialists, which are very important and uh, are the lifeblood of your empire. Uh, so Breeders of course also provides you with extra trade points, and you can choose Industrious and Ingenious with no problem. Uh, Industrious and Ingenious make sure you get extra minerals and energy, and uh, is overall pretty damn good for making sure that your society can prosper, and your specialists have enough resources to work with. Uh, generally with Slaver builds, you want to steer away from one very specific thing, and that is overproduction of raw resources. You don't really have many ways to spend them other than building up your planets, and building up your planets of course costs admin cap, uh, which detriments your overall efficiency of your specialist pops. We want to be a specialist heavy empire, and therefore we're going to choose traits that increase the production of resources needed for specialists, while also not overproducing. We want to keep your production for minerals and energy at about, you know, 50 to 100. No more than that because at that point you're just overproducing. On this principle, authoritarian slaver builds are actually a bit less efficient than this egalitarian build because you get more benefit out of the resources that you do get and you don't have an overproduction of resources from your slave pops. And so, this is the Empire. Now let me jump into a game and uh, just demonstrate some tactics that I usually use with this build. Alright, looks like we spawned in a pretty damn nice spot. You can uh, easily secure choke points, uh, but that is not our main problem at this point in the game. Our main issue is going to be taking some planets. Because the quicker you can get more pops, the faster your empire will grow, and the faster you will beat the other empires, especially on difficulties like this. Uh, right now I'm playing with Grand Admiral, No Scaling, Aggressive AI, and of course a bunch of other options that I'll leave in the description, and so we can't really afford making significant mistakes. And one of the significant mistakes that people sometimes make is not actually just straight up beelighting for every possible planet in their near vicinity. In our situation, we're going to just go for the near systems, explore them, and only after we know that there's a planet in them, we survey it. Uh, that way we can get our colony ship up and running as fast as possible, and uh, we can efficiently make our first colony happen within the first two years. Uh, right at the beginning of the game, you don't want to touch your policies whatsoever, uh, but later on you're going to want to change your food policy to nutritional plentitude, and your trade policy over to consumer benefits. Uh, you don't want to do this right at the beginning of the game, because it's going to mess up your economy, and uh, you're not going to get the raw resources that you really need. For example, with Interstitial Plentitude, you can get 10% extra power growth speed, but you'll be getting a lot less food, and you'll be able to create a lot less colony ships. Colony ships are very important at the beginning of the game, and so you want to prioritize them above everything else. The other thing that you want to prioritize above everything else is, you know, actual security. Uh, with the settings that I'm playing on, uh, we're pretty much going to need to take Supremacy as our first trait, unless, of course, every single one of the empires nearby are pacifists, in which case, yeah, expansion is nice. Uh, expansion is also nice on lower difficulty settings, in which you don't really have to worry about AI empires rushing you at year 10 and absolutely destroying you. Uh, as far as our planet goes, we're going to want a gun for our research lab right away, uh, so that we get a slight technological edge over the other empires, and then we're going to go for an alloy foundry. We're also going to make sure to clear the sprawling slums as fast as possible, and uh, Make sure that we get colony ships out as fast as possible as well. 
Uh, as far as research goes, at the beginning of the game, we're going to want to prioritize research and also pop go speed. As far as engineering and research goes, you're going to want a gun for Strikecraft as soon as you possibly can. So if you see Strikecraft, you go for that. That is because Strikecraft are the best defensive option out there at the beginning of the game, and since they're of tier 1 tech, you can get them as your first pick. If you put some Strikecraft on your stations, and especially on defensive platforms, uh, you can really benefit because uh, the fleet power they provide is insane, and they also have a bunch of tracking and evasion, and so they're perfect for fighting low tier combatants. Uh, since we obviously don't have Strikecraft as a choice right now, we're going to go for engineering research. Right now we're also going to want to prioritize building some mining stations in our beginner system, and mining stations in nearby systems. So now let's actually begin the game. I'll be showing off some of the strategies, and more in practice, um, and obviously if you want to see more strategies, you should watch a let's play of mine, in which case I will cover a lot more. But this is just going to be a brief overview. Alright, we have our first planet, size 25, how oh, wonderful. Let's go ahead and survey the system. If this system had no planet, we would just go on and survey another one, until we found a planet. What this also means is that we're going to want to queue up a colony ship as soon as possible, and uh, we're going to want to purchase any extra resources if necessary. We spend some of the resources at the beginning in order to get a good old research labs going, but we're going to want to just uh, save up for a little bit and get a colony ship. The second thing that we're going to want to get on our main planet is alloy foundries. Uh, we do want a substantial amount of alloy production, and the extra alloy bonuses that we get from, you know, having 20% bonuses to all our pops is uh, going to help us out with making two alloy foundries worth of uh, alloys efficient in uh, making our defense plausible. Yes, Strikecraft, perfect. We'll be able to put these on some defensive stations, probably over in Essek and Iristula, and we'll be pretty much safe. Uh, now we could obviously go aggressive, and uh, this build very easily allows that, uh, but for that we would have to militarize a lot more quickly, and uh, we would probably want to gun for all alloy foundries right off the bat. Since we're playing defensively, we can easily afford to go for research, and uh, be able to dominate the AI later. Alright, now we got our first colony up and running, and uh, for now, we're only going to have the toothy burbs on our planets. Uh, now one aspect of the pop growth system that I did not mention yet, is the fact that majorities actually determine what pops grow on the planet. That is actually reflected in two stats in the game code. New pop, same species weight, and new pop, exact species weight. Uh, that means that having a solid majority of a species on a planet will significantly influence the extra pops that grow on it. If you let natural growth go on for too long, you're probably going to end up with a lot of the same species, uh, be it your main species or your secondary species. You want a balance of the two, and you want to make sure you resettle in order to maintain that balance.
Uh, right now you can clearly see the effects of having charismatic on your species and uh, how it relates to having more pop jobs. Uh, ordinarily we would have to have a little bit of clerks or maybe some entertainers that our amenities are high on the main planet. However, now we can easily prioritize alloy production, research production, and other resource production without any problems. Oh god, an election. We have five candidates, and supporting one of them is just going to increase their chances. Uh, obviously in your real games, you're not really going to want to support any candidates, and uh, that is because supporting candidates every 10 years is very expensive in terms of influence. And you're going to want to use influence for a lot of other things, such as edicts, uh, claims, and new territory. So don't do what I just did. Also we now have Strikecraft, and uh, we can go ahead and design the perfect defensive platform. Let's go ahead, get those hangar bays and uh, just pop some basic strikecraft on. Now, these guys are going to be very, very powerful and uh, are going to make sure to repel pretty much any attacks. So just go for some of these, pop them on your defensive stations, and you'll be good to go. In our situation, we're going to want a gun for a choke point right over here and right over here. Um, now, if there's an empire starting to expand into the choke point, we're going to obviously recede over back here uh, by Kafefe. Uh, nice meme, Paradox Developers. And just sit and wait. We got pretty lucky with a spawn. We have a lot of planets to work with in this very small area. And so developing just five is going to be good enough uh, to out-tech any potential competitors. And just come in and destroy them later on. However, in this situation, I really hope to be able to claim this choke point, And so I'll just be rushing for it. Uh, now, we also got Mandate Unfulfilled, which kind of sucks, but honestly kind of doesn't matter. Six months force of unity is not a lot, and uh, I'm willing to miss that much. Also, it seems that there is a star base over here, and uh, we should avoid this area entirely. Actually, let's go up to Alphrus. Uh, we can't claim this planet right over here, but we can claim Alphrus. Uh, however, that's going to be it for today. I'll stop right here for the demonstration of this run. If you want to see a continuation of this strategy and uh, more in-depth mid-game and late-game tactics, uh, please vote in the top right corner, otherwise I'll just be resuming with my normal content, such as Let's Play videos. But even if you don't watch the follow-up video, uh, the strategy for the mid-game and late-game is going to go right around this. Uh, we discover an empire, we fortify up against that empire, and uh, we just sit and wait and develop our tech economy. We're going to go for a hardcore tech rush, uh, which means our basic resources are going to be near zero, and our tech is going to be as high as possible, and alloy production is going to be enough to sustain a sizable defense, uh, and not get threatened by any sort of attacks. Uh, in the mid game, we're going to continue rolling on with our empire. We're going to want to go for biological ascension and uh, make our pops even more efficient. Uh, once we get battleships, we're going to want to make sure they have an optimized loadout. I have a video on that in the top right corner. And at that point, we're just going to go to war and just stomp everything in sight. That is the end result of the strategy. Complete dominance over the galaxy and mass enslavement. Uh, but anyways, that about does it for today. If you enjoyed the video, please hit a like and subscribe if you want to see more interesting strategies like this or a civics tier guide, which is in the works right now. I also have a discord where people post guides and help each other out with the game. And so I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.